Hey everybody, Brian here with Bantam Overland. I'm super excited to be with you today as we release Sony's new 8500 plug and play bundle for your 2007 to 2018 Jeep JK. Sony's really stepped up and gone one step ahead of the competition with all the features that they've packed into their new 8500. Not only do you have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you also have HDMI connectivity, and the screen actually has a built-in pivot mechanism that lets you pivot it left, right, or up and down on demand. Just like with all of our other great plug and play bundles, these things are gonna come completely pre-wired, ready to go with all of the adapters, antennas, everything that you need to install this in your own driveway or your own garage. I think you guys are really gonna love all of the new features of this Sony 8500 bundle. So before we install it in our Jeep, let's go over a couple of the tools that we're gonna to need to complete the job. We always recommend having a microfiber towel. A wire fish is always a handy tool to have with you. A roll of tape. You're gonna need some sort of ratchet, either powered or manual. An extension, a 930 seconds hex socket. We'll have a couple of panel removal tools here. I have a metal and a plastic one. We also have a pair of cutters, a handful of zip ties. We're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. And if you have one of these extendable magnet things, that's always handy to have around as well, just in case you drop some of the screws. Before we get started on the install, a couple of great expandability options that you have with this plug and play bundle. One is the Bantam Overland backup camera. The other great thing about this radio is it also has the ability to add a front camera. Take it from us, having a front camera is a huge upgrade to any vehicle. Not only can you see what's behind you, but now you can see what's in front of you. On road, it's great for parking or navigating small areas and off road, it's perfect for seeing exactly what's in front of you on the trail. If you wanna see a full install video of either our Bantam Overland front or rear cameras, make sure that you like and subscribe and check out all of our videos on the YouTube channel. One of the great features about the Sony 8500 is that they are Maestro compatible. The Maestro is the module that is gonna integrate your 8500 to your vehicle and allow all sorts of great vehicle data and information to show up directly on your screen. If all these features weren't enough, the Sony 8500 is also Sirius XM ready, meaning you can listen to your favorite channel or podcast anywhere you're at. Now that we've gone over all of the great features of the new 8500 plug and play bundle, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into disassembling our Jeep so that we can get this installed. First step in the installation of your new plug and play bundle is obviously disassembly of your JK. So what I'm gonna show you today is gonna to be applicable for 2012 all the way up to 2018 and a half JKs. First step in the process is right here below the steering column, there's this lower panel, this dash panel. We need to remove it because we're gonna end up removing four screws in total that hold on the upper part of the dash. So to do that real easy, we're gonna go right below the dash here, stick our thumbs in and just pull straight back towards you. It's gonna release the two clips here at the top we're gonna pivot it all the way down and then pull straight back. So what we're trying to do is release these hooks here. So don't pull straight back on these, otherwise you risk breaking them off. So like I said, it's kind of a pop it out, pivot it all the way down and then remove. So we'll go ahead and put this in the back seat. Now, right at the top where we just removed, you're, you're gonna find two 932nd screws that hold in the lower portion of the upper dash. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our tool. This is where the little extension uh, comes in handy. We're gonna remove these two screws. Now that we have the two screws removed from the lower part of the dash, we're gonna set these on our cup holder for safekeeping. And we're gonna move right up on top of the dash here to the storage cubby. We're gonna remove our little insert, set that in the back seat and right below that is going to be another screw to take out got that one out put it in the cup holder as well fourth and final screw is behind your window switches so we're going to get our plastic panel tool we're going to start here right at the bottom we're just going to insert and we're going to pop this straight out towards us there's not a lot of slack on the switch cable here but what you're looking for is on one side, there is a red locking tab. You're gonna push that back and then you're gonna depress the tab and remove the main harness. So we're gonna push that, unlock it. 
and right next to that is the retaining pin. We're going to push that, give it a wiggle, and it's going to come right out. So with the windows switch out of the way, try to hold this so you guys can see. Here's the red locking tab, and right above it is the tab that holds in the main plug. The fourth and final screw is located right here below where the window switch was, so we'll go ahead and remove that one. At this point, the upper dash portion is free. There's nothing holding it in, so we're going to go ahead and remove it. But first, do yourself a favor and drop the steering wheel all the way to its lowest position and lock it back in place. This is going to give us room to lift the dash away up and over the steering column and your controls here. So it's just going to make life a lot easier for you. So kind of the easiest way I found to do this is just reach in where the window switch was. And we're just going to give it a gentle pull towards us. You can grab it on either end. And like I said, we're just going to gently kind of work it up and out of the way. And we can set this piece in the back seat. With the dash out of the way, you'll see now there are four screws holding in your factory radio. There's one on each corner. So we're going to go ahead and use our same 930 seconds socket, get those four removed, and then the radio will be able to come out. Now that we have our four screws in, we're going to grab the radio on either side. And we're just going to start to wiggle it a little bit towards us. And you're going to see that it's going to come out. There's a retaining clip here on the top that uh, Jeep put in. So if you feel resistance, it's just that pin. So just like you saw me do, just kind of wiggle it, even pressure. And you're going to see that there are a couple connectors on the back of your factory radio. We're going to go ahead and remove all of them. There's a tab on the bottom of the main connector there. You're just going to depress the tab and remove it. Same with the square gray plug here, tab on the bottom. And then you have your two antenna connections. So same, same sort of thing here. You got a tab, you're going to push the tab in and release the two antenna connections. There we go factory radio is now out. The next thing we're going to do is remove this HVAC control panel here because uh, behind it is the Uconnect module and that's where we'll need to get to our USB connection eventually. So this one's super simple to come off. I'm just going to gently grab and pull back towards you. This one's just held in with pressure clips. So you can see there it's just the pressure clips and we're going to just disconnect the connections on the back here. Again, all of these have the pins or the tabs. We're going to push down and release. All right, have our four connections released. So we'll go ahead and set this out of the way. Now you may have noticed our Jeep that we're installing on today is a manual transmission. So we've gone ahead and moved the gear shift. If you were having trouble with this and you have an automatic transmission, uh, our recommendation is to just move the shifter uh, back. That'll give you a little bit more room to get that panel off, but either way it can be done pretty easily. So on our Jeep, this black box here is the Uconnect module and there's two screws holding that one in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the two screws and just kind of set the Uconnect module out of the way because like I said we're going to use one of the connections on there to maintain our factory USB. So again just like everything else 930 second socket you have one screw is on the top left of the module and then there's one towards the bottom right. I'll go ahead and let you guys know now be careful with the one on the bottom right. Uh, it's kind of in a weird spot and the last thing that you want to do is drop that screw down into the oblivion of your dash. Um, so take your time. If you have a mag retractable magnet, that might be a good thing to have on hand just in case it does accidentally drop so you can retrieve that. So we'll go ahead and remove those two and then I'll show you the connection that we're going to disconnect for the USB.
Now that we have the two screws out of the Uconnect module, you can see the tabs here on the front. I'm just gonna go ahead and depress and release those. All right, so here is the bottom of the Uconnect module. The one that we're gonna use for the USB is the one that was plugged in right here. So we'll show you that in a little bit. And then this one, you can go ahead and when you get ready to reinstall, you can plug this one back in and set the Uconnect module back into place. So for right now, we're gonna set this to the side. Now that we have disassembly complete, it is time to start installing our new Sony 8500 bundle. But before we can get the chassis of the radio in, there's a few cables that we need to run. The first of those is gonna be the OBD2 connection. So it's gonna be the red and yellow paired wires here. It has the larger black connection and then a black two pin connection. We're gonna run this from the OBD2 port down here to the left of the steering wheel under the dash. And then we're gonna kinda of go up and right to behind the radio. This is gonna be crucial in transmitting any of that vehicle information and diagnostics to the head unit. So we're gonna start with this. So we're gonna drop down in the footwell and we'll start running this cable. We're gonna make the connection here to the OBD2 port. Snap that into place. And then the smaller connector here with the little OBD2 tag on it, we're gonna run this towards the center of the dash and then up to behind the radio. So kind of the trick here is find something, like there's a little wire that comes out of the back of OBD2. We're gonna loop it through there just to kind of keep it tucked up out of the way. Again, get all your tangles out, pull all the slack through. All right, at this point, we can just kind of find anything and everything up there to, we're gonna run across towards the center. We need to grab some zip ties, we can do that as well. We wanna keep this wire up and out of the way um, as obviously the, all the pedals are here and that wouldn't be safe to get it, your foot snagged on it. So there's actually another wire here, so we're gonna we're gonna use that as kind of an anchoring point. We'll run that over. And then, like I said, we'll grab some zip ties and any of this slack here, we'll pull it tight, we'll anchor it to this, and then we'll feed it up the dash. So we're gonna wrap that main harness and our OBD2. Go ahead and pull the slack out of it and make sure our zip tie is nice and tight. And that should do it as far as holding the cable up out of the way of our feet. Yep, that's good. Okay, with our OBD2 cable ran to the bottom of the dash, now all we need to do is get it up to the top behind the radio. So this is definitely, if you have a wire fish, this is where it's gonna come in handy. If you have a metal coat hanger, uh, a rod, anything, anything that'll work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right kind of below the vent here, and we're gonna shoot the wire fish straight down towards the floorboard. We'll hook the wire and then we'll pull it back up. So let's go ahead and just follow the inside of the dash straight down. All right, I got the wire fish came out the bottom. Go ahead and hook the wire. And there we are. I said a second ago, having a wire fish definitely makes this part super easy. Put our tools away and all right, with our OBD2 cable routed up to behind the dash and through the radio opening, we can now move on to our Sony provided microphone. So this comes with two mounting options. You can either use the C-clip or it also comes with a pedestal mount and a piece of double-sided tape. We're gonna use the double-sided tape, but you can also use the C-clip to mount it anywhere that you want. So we'll go ahead and pop that off. We'll put our pedestal mount on and we're going to go ahead and just stick one side of the double-sided tape to the bottom of the pedestal mount for right now where we're going to be mounting this is going to be right here on top of the steering column uh, we found that this is kind of the best place to mount it because when you're driving the microphone's right in front of you it's not up near the windows, it's not gonna catch any road noise, or if you have the top off like we do, uh, cut down on the wind noise there as well. So we'll take the twist tie off, we'll get this all straightened out, and we'll get this run to also behind the head unit. 
All right, so we got our cord all straightened out. Make sure we don't have any knots or tangles. We're gonna take the headphone jack and make sure that our steering wheels drop down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right from where the top of the steering wheel is. You can go right behind the dash panel here and you'll be able to work the headphone jack around to just to the left side of the vent. So I can actually get my hands in there and just literally pass it from hand to hand. Uh, if you're having difficulty doing that, using your wire fish may aid in that process. So now that we have it through, we're gonna pull all of the slack through. And then we're not gonna mount our microphone just quite yet because we still have to put the dash cover back on. And um, what we found is this will get in the way of doing that. So what I like to do is just take the microphone and I'm just gonna drape it right here over the steering wheel for right now. This will give us plenty of slack later on to mount it. But in the meantime, we will finish routing the rest of the wire. Now that we have it here, we're just gonna go up behind the metal support here in the back of the dash that holds the factory, um, that holds the factory head unit in. And with that routed up, we'll go ahead and do some wire management. There's a lot of extra wire here, so we'll go ahead and wrap that up and we'll use the twist tie that we took off. So I like to do that and then just leave a little bit of a tail. That way we have enough to plug into the back of the radio. We'll grab our twist tie and we'll just secure the rest of the slack. Now that's the microphone. We'll just leave it dangling right there. And the last thing that we need to run is our navigation antenna. This antenna is gonna allow your head unit to launch either wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So what we wanna do with the antenna puck here is we wanna mount this in a place where it has good free access to uh, the satellites and everything. So we don't wanna mount it in the dash. So where we're gonna mount it is actually right here on top of the dash. So some of the Jeeps, you'll have a little sensor right here. Ours does not. But if your Jeep does have a sensor, there is enough space there to mount this little puck directly in front of it. Um, and kind of like this microphone, it does have a piece of double-sided tape right on the back side of it. So we'll run our cable and then we'll stick our antenna right here on top of the dash. Again, we'll save our twist tie, we'll straighten our cord out. So we're gonna start with the gray plug end of the antenna and kind of what we're gonna do is right here in the center of the dash, if you put your fingers down between the dash and the windshield, you'll feel that there's this rubber gasket and then you can actually just push it right out of the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the connector in go behind the gasket and then there's actually a little spot here right in the dash where we're gonna pop it right back out. So push that rubber gasket out of the way. And then with your fingers, you can just literally just push it right around the corner there and you'll see it pop back out. All right. So we can see it goes in the top, comes right out the bottom here. Again, we're gonna go under the metal support bracket and we will pull out all of the slack. All right, before we stick our antenna to the dash, we wanna make sure the dash is nice and clean. That way the adhesive on the double-sided tape sticks well to the dash. So we're gonna grab a microfiber and just go ahead and wipe that area real quick. Got our microfiber. We're just gonna make sure that the dash is nice and cleaned off. We will peel the backing off of the double-sided tape. And we'll pull, pull the slack out, position it right there in the center, and just give it a nice firm push, and that is good to go. So again, got all the slack pulled out. Let's do a little bit of wire management. Again, we're gonna twist up most of it and leave ourselves a bit of a tail to plug into the radio. And we'll use another one of the twist ties to secure the rest of the wire here. All 
All right, so let's do a quick recap on what we've done so far. We've run the OBD2 cable that came in the install parts bag. We've run the Sony provided microphone and the navigation antenna that also came in your install parts bag. If you've opted to add the backup camera at a later point, be sure to check out the card in the corner for a full install video of the backup camera. If you've opted to add our Bantam Overland front camera and camera mount, go ahead and check out the video on our YouTube channel. It shows you exactly how to install that step-by-step. Step. Now that we have all of our microphone, our accessory wires, everything ran to behind the radio, now's the point where we can start putting things back together and start making connections. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the chassis of the radio and the dash kit, and we're gonna start by connecting our factory USB. So let's grab the radio here, and we'll move some of our stuff out of the way because we're actually just gonna set it right here on the passenger seat. And we're gonna start with this gray plug. You can see it's plugged into an adapter and an extension. So we're gonna take the twist tie off of this. And again, we'll just get everything stretched out. And where we're going to run this is down to where we disconnected the Uconnect module previously. So kind of the good place that I found to do this, you take the plug and right next to the window switch harness, if you just kind of go right down in the dash, you can work the connection right down here to the bottom we're going to grab our connection here we're going to match up the shapes and we're going to push that together until we hear a nice click so we'll tuck this out of the way move some of the stuff out of the way all right so that is our usb so now we can close up the rest of this panel so what we're actually going to do is the other main connection here for the Uconnect, we're going to tuck it down out of the way as well. Just going to find everything at home. We're going to go ahead and stick the Uconnect module back in here just for safekeeping. So let's grab that out of the back seat. So with the Uconnect module, obviously we're not going to have anything plugged in. We had our USB and then we're just the other one we're going to leave unplug so we're going to grab two of our bolts and we'll just go ahead and put the module back in place With the Uconnect module back in place, we can go ahead and grab the HVAC control panel, we'll plug everything back in, and we'll snap that panel back into place. All right, let's find all of our connections. Get everything plugged back in. All right, so we got the four connections on this one plugged back in. We'll go ahead and line the pins back up. Make sure everything's out of the way. And we'll snap that right back into place. Now that we have our USB connected and our lower panel on, let's go ahead and work on the rest of the connections to the back of the radio. So as we lift up the radio here, we're gonna just kind of start from the top left uh, the first one is the USB cable that we already have connected. One important thing to note is you do have HDMI connectivity options on this 8500 radio. And the HDMI connection is actually right here next to the USB. So uh, the radio itself doesn't come with the HDMI cable, but if you wanted to hook up another device, you just need to go to the store and pick up the appropriate adapters for your phone or whatever you're trying to hook up. But just wanted to point out that that's where the connection is there. So moving over, we have our main harness here. And you'll see that it's got a couple of plugs on it. Um, the first ones that we come to out of the back of the radio is these two um, power and ground wire pairs. Uh, we've gone ahead and pre-wired these for you. So if uh, during your install, if you're adding the Bantam Overland backup camera or the Bantam Overland front camera mount, 
that the power and ground for your cameras are already there. Uh, they already have bullet connectors on them. So again, easy plug and play addition. Continuing on down this harness, you get to the large gray connection. This is going to be our main vehicle connector. There's also a red and yellow wire with a black two pin connector. That is gonna be for our OBD2. So let's go ahead and we'll grab the red and yellow wire from our dash and we'll make that connection. And the last wire here with another bullet connector is actually the amp turn on wire. So if you're using an aftermarket amplified setup or aftermarket amplifiers, you're gonna to wanna to hook into this to communicate the signal from your head unit to the amplifier to let it know to turn on. So another great add-on option there for you as well. So that's pretty much that harness. So what we're gonna do is since we have the rear and the front camera on this Jeep, we're gonna go ahead and grab the power and ground wires for those cameras. And here's the rear. And we're just gonna pick a pair of wires here. I'm just gonna match red to red and black to black. And then we're gonna make sure that these, we give these bullet connectors a nice good push, make sure that they're all the way seated and then we'll grab the other pair for the front camera. And again, we're just matching the red wire to the red wire and the black wire to the black wire. Again, push them all the way in, make sure that the metal on the bullet connectors are not exposed. All right, moving on. Next collection here is a bundle of RCAs. You can see that Sony was nice enough to go ahead and label each of them. So you have some, the reds and whites, these are for your front and rear uh, channels. So if you're again, running an amplifier, you can use those. You also have a sub out option. And the ones that we're interested in today are the three yellow ones. And you'll see they have tags on that are say rear camera in. So for our backup camera, we'll take the little cover off We'll grab the yellow RCA for our rear camera, plug that in. And then the other two say camera in one and camera in two. So for the front camera, we're gonna assign that to camera in one. Again, remove the cover, grab our video cable for the front camera and plug those in. We always recommend taping up these joints uh, just so that that way when we go to tuck stuff away that they don't come apart. So let's go ahead and secure those with a little wrap of tape. All right, so that finishes up the cameras. Couple more connections here. The last adapter here is the AM FM antenna adapter. So if we look in the dash here towards the passenger side, you have two antenna connections. They're, they're exactly the same except for the color. So the one that's white and red is gonna be your AM FM antenna. The yellow orangish one here, this is gonna be for your Sirius XM antenna. So if you chose to add or maintain Sirius XM with your bundle, you will also receive a Sirius XM module and the appropriate antenna adapter that will plug directly into here. The XM module itself will already be pre-attached to your bundle before it leaves our shop. So all we need to do on this install is the AM FM. So we'll find the white and red one just line the pin up and snap that together. A couple more connections. We have the navigation antenna that we mounted up here on top of the dash. So again, that is going to be the gray square plug. And if we look at the back of the radio, there's a white connector right here at the top. It's labeled GPS directly under it. Just gonna push that into place. We need our Sony microphone so that we can uh, use our voice commands and talk to people while we're driving. So we'll find the headphone jack for our Sony microphone. And right next to the AM FM antenna where it plugs in, you'll see that there's a red port labeled mic, M-I-C. We're gonna plug our headphone jack in right there. And the last and most important connection is actually for the main vehicle connector. So we're gonna find our large gray plug 
find the matching plug in the dash, line these up. These are keyed plugs, so they're only to go together one way and snap that into place. So as far as connecting wires and adapters and accessories, uh, that's pretty much it. You will notice that you'll have a couple of plugs left over in the dash. One of those will be your window switch. And then the other one is this gray square plug. Uh, this was connected to your Uconnect module. So again, the, the gray square one with the factory tag on it, we are not gonna use. So we'll tuck that down and out of the way. All right, so we have everything connected. Now it's time to find everything at home in the dash. So take your time. You're gonna have to tuck things in. Uh, it's a lot of wires, but everything will fit. So kind of the trick here is to, to push them up and then to the sides and then get everything where you can push the radio straight back into place. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so with a little bit of tucking and a little bit of work, you can see that we get our dash kit all the way flush to the dash. And you can see that the holes in the dash kit line up perfectly with the four bolts that held in your factory unit. So let's grab a couple out of the cup holder here, and we're gonna go ahead and secure the radio chassis so that we can grab the screen next and test it. All right, so we have our four dash kit screws in there. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the screen. We're gonna just place it onto the chassis of the radio. We wanna give everything a functionality test um, because the, we don't wanna like put the Jeep all the way back together just to figure out that something came unplugged. So let's grab the screen and we'll talk about a few things before we mount this. Um, we've gone ahead and preset the the neck here on the back of the screen where we we think the fitment is is right there is adjustability in this so if you want to move the screen physically up or down if you just pop off the side covers there's a couple of screws here on each side you can move the neck of the screen up and down you also have screws on the top you can move it left to right or if you want it to stick further away from the dash, you can also loosen the screws on the side here and move it in or out. We, the way we've set it is that it sits kind of as close to the dash as possible, but it's up to your preference. Like I said in the intro, one of the great things about this radio is actually this pivot mechanism here on the bottom of the screen. So after everything's put together and secured in place, you actually have the ability to pivot the screen both left and right and up and down without having to remove any of the screws. So all we need to do is line up the connection here in the back of the radio, and we're just gonna slide it right into the chassis and give it a push until you hear it kind of snap into place. Now we can grab our key. We're just gonna put the vehicle in accessory power. Sometimes when you start this up for the first time, when it's connected to your vehicle, you'll need to hit the home standby button here to the left of the button bar to tell it to power up the first time. Once you've done that the first time, every time after that, the unit will just power up with your vehicle. All right, so you guys can see it loaded super fast once we powered it on. The first screen that it's gonna come to this first time is the initial setting screen. This is where it gives you the option to set your language. We're gonna turn demo mode off and we're also gonna be able to set our date and time. So language, obviously we're gonna leave it English. Demo mode, we're just gonna to toggle to the off position and we're gonna set our date and time. Today's date is March the 7th, 2024. And it is currently 1.22 in the afternoon. We're gonna leave it as month, day, year. Leave it in 12 hour clock. We're just gonna go back. Everything is correct and we're gonna hit okay. Next screen that's gonna pop up is a safety message. This will populate every time you turn it on. You have two options. You can either hit close or you can see that we did nothing 
and it'll automatically just go away on its own. So here is the home screen of the unit. So what I really love about this, is you got a nice big clock, you have all of your icons. Like the way I'm sitting with my arm on the center console here, everything is just like perfectly in reach. It's out of the way of knobs. So um, really just like a great fit here. So we'll just run through some of the functions. We'll test the radio. We can hear static already. Let's find a radio station. And all right, so button bar works for volume. Let's test the steering wheel controls. Those also work. Hold it down, does mute. On the other side, we can flip through our presets. So that seems to be working. We'll go ahead and mute it. You can see here Sirius XM. So if you had your Sirius XM module connected, you would be able to go there. If your module is connected and the antenna is connected correctly, you would receive channel one on your Sirius tuner. Uh, you can connect via Bluetooth. We can hit the rear cam. So we have our rear camera there. We can also go to all the way here to the right, all apps. You can swipe the menu up to give you the rest of the options. Uh, one important thing to note is you can actually rearrange the icons on the screen. Uh, it won't do like a replace function like on your phone, but if you wanted to move settings down to the lower menu, you literally just put your finger on it till it highlights and you can drag it down. Say you wanted to move your front camera up, camera one, and then we just put it to where settings. So that way when we're in our home screen, whatever icons you want here, you can have here. You can also move them all off the home screen if you just want a little bit of a cleaner look. So you can see now that we have it connected, we have gauges. So obviously the vehicle is not running right now, but you can see you have fuel percentage, you have intake temps, miles per hour, RPMs. There's a second menu, braking. If you want to do zero to 60 times in your JK, you can clock them right here. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. And then the other thing is you also have vehicle info. So you can see here we have battery voltage. We have individual tire pressures for all of our tires. So uh, definitely when you're off-roading or hitting the trails, being able to see that information right here is super crucial. You can also see door alerts and then a general check engine light. So uh, a lot of cool kind of tech that we didn't have with the factory head unit. Um, so the only thing we have left really to check is either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So I'm going to grab my phone. I have an iPhone and I'll show you guys how to connect that. We'll check to make sure that wireless CarPlay is working and then we'll finish up our install. All right, so to connect your phone, you wanna make sure that you have both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled on your device. So on the iPhone, I'm gonna to go to the settings menu, gonna go into the Bluetooth menu. On the head unit, I'm gonna to go to devices, and we're gonna say add new device. And then what we're looking for to pop up, and it already did on my phone, is this XAV AX8500. So I see it here on my other devices menu. I'm gonna tap that on my phone. It's gonna give me a pairing code. I'm gonna say pair on my phone, pair on the head unit. My phone is gonna ask me if I want to allow contacts. I do, because I wanna see who's calling or texting me. My phone's gonna ask me if I wanna use CarPlay, absolutely. And then one more time, we're gonna hit CarPlay on the head unit. You hear the little chime. CarPlay is now connected. I was listening to my Sirius XM app, so it took me automatically back to that. So my phone is now connected, so I can put it away. And now we have the home screen. We'll go back to the home screen of Apple CarPlay. So if you've had any other vehicle or been in any other vehicle that had CarPlay, this is going to look very familiar to you. Uh, you have all of your Apple CarPlay compatible apps or your Android compatible apps. You can swipe through the screens. You have all your mapping, we have Google Maps, Waze. You also have all of your streaming. I have Amazon Music, Sirius XM. So again, you know, you can customize these. Um, you can also go in and we'll go to settings and wallpaper. You can do custom wallpaper. We're just gonna set this background to black. So again, a super clean look. Um, some of the other great features is you have your most recently used apps, hands-free calling, your hands-free text messaging, 
all of that stuff you now have in your Jeep. So an awesome tech upgrade. So we know that everything works. So now we just need to finish up the install. So we're gonna power the vehicle off. We're gonna remove the screen and then we're gonna finish putting the rest of the dash together. We're gonna set our screen out of the way. We already secured the four bolts that hold in the dash kit. So the next piece that we're gonna to wanna to put on is actually the dash cover. So let's grab that out of the back seat. And again, this is why earlier in the install, we said do not mount the microphone quite yet. So we can slide the dash cover back over. Make sure that your window switch harness is accessible. And we're gonna push this back into place. And we'll start with securing the four screws. We'll start with the one under the window switch. Let's grab our window switch and we'll put that back in. Again, we're gonna line the connector up, snap it into place. Don't forget about the red locking tab. Push that into place, orient our window switch and pop it back into place and that will take us up top to the bolt on top of the dash. All right, got that one in place. Grab our little tray. Now we're gonna replace the two here by the steering column. All right, so that's all the bolts. Let's grab the lower panel here. Again, just like kind of the opposite of when we took it out, line up the hinges on the bottom, pivot it up and snap the top back into place. Let's go ahead and reset our steering wheel. And now is a good time to take care of the microphone before we finish up the rest of the install. So like I said earlier, we're gonna place it right here on top of the steering column. So we'll grab our microfiber, make sure it's good and clean, and then we'll just use the double-sided tape to stick it into place. Again, just peel the backing off. We'll center it in the steering wheel and just give it a little push. Make sure our microphone's nice and centered, our wire's tucked out of the way. So that's all taken care of. Last thing we need to do is attach the screen and then there's five screws that are gonna secure the screen to the chassis. You can find these five screws in this little blue bag in your install parts bag. I'll show you here in a second, but there's four silver ones and one black one. The four silver ones will go here on the corners. Then the black plastic cover will slide forward and there's one screw right here on the top that just holds this plastic cover to the top of the neck of the radio. So let me show you how to do that. So now we can grab the screen. We're just gonna line it up and push it right into place. And we're gonna push it all the way back. Now we're gonna grab the four silver screws and the one black screw and we'll secure the screen. If you have a magnetic tip screwdriver, uh, I definitely recommend that for this step. If you don't, just be careful. So where we're gonna secure it there's two on the top, and then there's gonna be one down below on each side. So we'll start with the two on the top. And then we'll do the two on the bottom keeping in mind that these just need to be finger tight. With the four silver ones secured, we can reach in on either side and we're gonna pull the black cover up until the hole there lines up with the hole in the neck of the radio. So that one lines up right there. And that holds that in place. 
with those five screws in place to secure the screen. We are now officially done with the installation of our new Sony 8500 plug and play bundle. So one thing I wanna show you guys before we go is really the neat feature in the Sony 8500. Uh, outside of everything that we've talked about with the tech and the 10.1 inch HD screen is really the pivot. So in some of the other models, they were just, they were fixed. Like in the 9500, you could move it up or down or left or right. With the 8500, now that we have it secured to the chassis, you can literally, if you want to pivot it towards you, you literally grab either side of the screen and you can pivot it this way. If you want a passenger wants to look at it, you can pivot the screen the other way. You also have up and down, so which is a kind of a cool feature because depending on where you are, uh, where the sun is, you know, you might get a little bit of a glare. Now you can easily adjust that without having to undo a bunch of things. So uh, there was always a question that we got in the past about, well, does the screen pivot? Guess what? With the 8500, it absolutely does. So. In my opinion, in our opinion here at Bantam Overland, this is an awesome upgrade for your 07 to 2018 JK. Uh, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, the vehicle data, the gauges, the front camera, the back camera, add-on capability, all huge upgrades for your Jeep JK. So if you wanna pick up this bundle or any of the other products that we've talked about in this video, be sure to head over to the shop and pick yours up today at www.bantamoverland.com. Like always, have a blast out there.